Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. Are the indigenous Native Americans, the Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible? Shalom, peace. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Ten lost tribes. The ten lost tribes were the ten of the twelve tribes of Israel that were said to have been exiled from the kingdom of Israel after its conquest by the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Circa 722 BCE. These are the tribes of Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Manasseh, and Ephraim. All but Judah and Benjamin, as well as some members of Levi, the priestly tribe, which did not have its own territory. A map or chart of the land of Israel. The vision of the promised land to the twelve tribes of Israel. Also, the tribes of Asher and Reuben were never mentioned as participating in anything after the conquest of the land of Canaan by the Israelites. Living in either Phoenician, Asher, or Moabite, Reuben controlled territory. The tribe of Asher lived or controlled the land that was later called by Roman and Greek historians Phoenicia. And Phoenicians. Phoenicia is the territory or land of the tribe of Asher. Territory. Sites which, according to the Bible, were allocated to Asher and whose locations have since been identified appear to be a scattered distribution of settlements rather than a compact and well-defined tribal region, perhaps because of the situation that its territory was in the area that was controlled by Phoenicia. 1 Kings chapter 7 verse 13 to 14 the MSG version Bible. King Solomon sent to Tyre and asked Hiram, not the king, another Hiram, to come. Hiram's mother was a widow from the tribe of Naphtali. His father was a Tyrenian and a master worker in bronze. Hiram was a real artist. He could do anything with bronze. He came to King Solomon and did all the bronze work. The complete works of Josephus. Now Solomon sent for an artificer out of Tyre, whose name was Hiram. He was by birth of the tribe of Naphtali on his mother's side. For she was of that tribe. But his father 
was Ur of the stock of the Israelites. This man was skillful in all sorts of work. But his chief skill lay in working in gold and silver and brass, by whom were made all the mechanical works about the temple, according to the will of Solomon. Who were the Phoenicians? Nesim or Genor? Page 154. Hiram himself is from the tribe of Naphtali, and not the widow. In other words, Hiram is from the tribe of Naphtali, while his mother is from the tribe of Dan. That's not correct. His mother was from the tribe of Naphtali, but this is the point. It must be remembered that tribal affiliation was by the house of the father. Hence, Hiram was from the tribe of Naphtali by the house of his father, whereas his mother was from the tribe of Dan. His mother was from the tribe of Naphtali. When the text adds, and his father was a man of Tyre, this is to inform the reader that although his father was of the tribe of Naphtali, he, his father, resided in Tyre. Why was it necessary to make this remark? Because it was the tribe of Asher which had conquered Tyre and settled there, and not the tribe of Naphtali. Hiram is then an Israelite, both on his father's and on his mother's side. Josephus writes about Hiram, who was of Naphtali descent on his mother's side, for she was of that tribe, and whose father was Urias, an Israelite by race. This means he regards him as an Israelite on both sides, except that he substitutes the tribe of Dan with the tribe of Naphtali on the mother's side. To sum up, names such as Sidonians or Tyrenians do not indicate that the intention is non-Israelites. There are by no means synonymous with Canaanites, as most scholars seem to believe. Tyrrhenians, Sidonians, Phoenicians is at times synonymous with Israelites. Collins, Atlas of the Bible. Page 90. Collins, Atlas of the Bible. The Imperial Age of Solomon. Israel's relationship with Phoenicia. The Phoenicians were direct descendants of the Canaanites. They occupied the narrow coastal plain from around Echo in the south to near Tripoli in the north. Adventurous sailors and traders, they traveled and established colonies all over the Mediterranean and beyond in search of raw materials and markets for their goods. Though the Bible regard Phoenician religion as a dangerous threat, the Phoenicians were for a long time on friendly terms with Israel. And indeed, there were always close ties between the two peoples. They traded the Phoenicians with the Israelites, of course. They traded in the Levant in sailing all over the Mediterranean and beyond, the Phoenicians developed markets and acquired raw materials from places hitherto unknown to the Near East. 
their ships, the ships of Tarish, as they are known in the Bible, sailed as far as the Straits of Gibraltar and beyond into the Atlantic. Of course, they sailed to the Americas. Tarish is the name of Spain in the Bible. Genesis chapter 11. On this map, we can see the Phoenicians and Israelite Federation or Alliance sailing to an area in Morocco known as Mogador to Mogador. Wikipedia Mogador Island. Mogador Island. It's in Morocco. History. The Carthaginian or Phoenician navigator Hanno, who was an Israelite, that was stated in a previous video, visited and established a trading post in the area in the 5th century BC and Phoenician or Hebrew artifacts have been found on the island. Phoenician or Hebrew artifacts have been found in Magador and Morocco. A Phoenician ship. Collaboration between the Phoenicians and Israel obviously made economic sense. Israel controlled important sections of international trade routes. For example, to the Red Sea and South Arabia and could supply agricultural products such as corn, wine, oil, and basalm. Ezekiel chapter 27 verse 17. A cuneiform tablet of the 7th century BC refers to Phoenician grain merchants in Assyria using a Judean grain measure. Cuneiform tablets were also found in the Americas. In return, the Phoenicians provided craftsmen of great skill and fine luxury goods for sale, both of which were highly prized in Israel. Alliances established by David and Solomon and renewed by the House of Omri were strengthened by the dynastic marriages of Jezebel and Athaliah and to the royal families of Israel and Judah. The Israelites and Phoenicians or Canaanites intermarried. These two people, the Israelites and Canaanites, were a federation or an alliance known in history as Phoenicians. Phoenician, Israelite city of Carthage, a military harbor complex. The Phoenicians were closely involved with Solomon's building program, Second Chronicle, chapter two, and a joint venture to Ophir. Ophir is the Americas, though perhaps not purely Phoenician in style and craftsmanship. Solomonic and later royal buildings in places such as Jerusalem, Megiddo, and Samaria show the collaboration between Phoenician and Israelite workmen.
referred to in the biblical account of Solomon's building program. 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 18. 2 Chronicles chapter 2 verse 13 to 14. A Phoenician Israelite, port city of Carthage. Inscriptions show that the Phoenicians were widely present in Israel and Judah, not only in Galilee and the coastal plain, but also inland, even in places as remote as Kantelit, Ajrod, in the Negev. Phoenician carved ivory has been found in quantity at Samaria and at other sites. Israelite pirates copied Phoenician motifs. Phoenician and Israelite technology is the same. Ancient and Modern Britons by David McRitchie. If the Phoenicians were white men, and they wasn't, they may have been the traditional whites of the Shawnees, Native Americans. If they were, as Signal Generale suggests, a copper-colored race, Native Americans, then they were likely the progenitors or fathers of the Shawnees themselves. The Shawnees progenitors or forefathers were Phoenician Israelites who assert that their forefathers were not indigenous. They came from the land of Israel, but came across the ocean on ships from whence they know not, but we know from Israel. Chief Joseph's cuneiform tablet. Chief Joseph, a revered, nas, precise leader, was a man of great honor when he was captured by the American army in 1877. He had an actual Assyrian cuneiform tablet in his medicine bag. In 1877, the respected leader of the Nez Perce tribe surrendered to the U.S. government. At his surrender, Chief Thunder rolling down the mountain, known by his Christian name, Joseph, presented General Nelson Appleton Miles with a pendant, a one-inch square clay tablet with writings unrecognizable to General Miles. The writing, which was translated by Dr. Robert D. Biggs, a seriology professor at the University of Chicago, turned out to be a sales receipt dating back to 2042 B.C. in Assyria. It read, Nalu received one lamb from Abba Shaga on the 11th day of the month of the festival of An in the year in Ma Gala Anna was installed as a high priestess of Nana. The figure on the top, on the left, 
is a 9th century B.C. sculptured tablet depicting a Babylonian king worshipping at the shrine of the sun god Shamash, whose seal was the Ashar star, featured on the Assyrian flag on the right. The chief's chief's Joseph medicine bag displays the same Assyrian Ashar star. The northern kingdom of Israel was exiled out of the land of Israel into the lands in the Assyrian Empire. So Chief Joseph has relics of when the Native Americans who are Israelites were in the land of the Assyrians. The Hearn Tablet other tablets with an Assyrian connection have been found throughout North America. A tablet similar in size and appearance to the Chief Joseph tablet was found in 1963 in northwestern Georgia near the Chattahoochee River. Like the Chief Joseph tablet. This one was a receipt for the sale of sheep and goats that was to be used in a ceremonial sacrifice. From other information contained on the tablet, it appears to have been created in 2040 BC. One difference is the Georgia tablet was made of lead. In 1963, a cuneiform tablet was found in Georgia by Miss Jo Hearn as she dug in her garden. It was written in the Sumerian language by a scribe named N. Lila and dates to about 2040 B.C. A delegation of the northern kingdom of Israel bearing gifts to the Assyrian ruler Shalmaneser III, circa 840 BCE, on the Black Obelisk in the British Museum. Jehu, king of the northern tribes of Israel, bowing down to the king of the Assyrian Empire. To the left, Jehu, northern king of Israel, 841 to 814 BCE. To the right, a head found in Sculpture head found in Mexico. Photograph. National Geographic Society. Archaeological trip to Mexico. 1939 to 1940. Olmec clay head from Tres Zapates, Veracruz, Mexico. The lifelike appearance clearly suggests that this is an artist's study of a real person not an artistic conception from imagination. A Mayan man, Central American, wearing a shield or star of David airing. Native Americans, Israelites, 